Follow along to create this simple interactive scrolling in-page navigation in Figma. Stay around as I have a bonus tip at the end that makes it feel even more interactive. All right, let's walk through how to create this in-page navigation within Figma. So the two things we want to achieve with this in-page navigation is that as we scroll down the page, we want this to stick to the frame so that it follows us as we go down the page. That's the first thing we want it to achieve. And then the second thing we want to achieve is we also want to make it so that each one of these links, when the user clicks it, it will anchor link them to the right section. So if I click customization, it will link me to customization and it will help with the scrolling. So let's start with making this on-page menu sticky. So select your frame, come over to prototype, and all you have to do is change position to scroll with parent to sticky, stay at the top edge. So what that means is that as you scroll down, as soon as it hits this point within the prototype viewer, it will start scrolling with you. I'll show you what that looks like, but there's one extra step to make it even better. Select your frame and click present. So in our preview here, as we scroll down, you'll see that as soon as it hits the top edge, it actually starts coming with us down the page. But as I said, there's one way to make this better. As you can see here, this looks a little bit awkward with touching the edge of the page. It would be nice if there was a little bit of space between the top of the page and this menu. So let's go back to it, come to your menu, Actually, we're going to turn this off sticky. We're actually going to turn this back to scroll with parent. And then we're going to select our menu component, shift A to apply auto layout. We actually want one more frame for it to all be in. The reason that we're going to do that is that select this outer wrapper. We want to get rid of the spacing and the side padding and the bottom padding. But we want to actually apply some top padding here. Now I'm just going to line this back up to where it was before. Now let's select our outer wrapper with our padding applied to the top of it. Come across to prototype and change position on this one from scroll with parent to sticky. Now if we preview that again, this just makes it a bit more refined. As we scroll down and we hit the bottom, is actually going to hit that outer wrapper frame that has the 32 pixel padding. So it looks a lot more refined if you're showing this to a client of the interaction you expect to happen, because this is what you would probably do in development. You probably would make it so that there is a bit of a pixel difference here. So now it's actually getting applied to that padding. And as you scroll down, it works as we attended. So we'll scroll all the way to the bottom and then it can come all the way back up to the top as well. So that's the first part. And now let's set up the anchor links. As you can see on the side here, each of my paragraphs are wrapped in an auto layout wrapper. So each heading and paragraph here is wrapped within an auto layout wrapper. So paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, and so on, all the way down. The only caveat here is that this big frame doesn't have auto layout and all these aren't wrapped within auto layout because you can't achieve the anchor links if they are. Now let's set up the anchor link. So select your first one, mechanical versus membrane, click prototype add an interaction and on click we want to set this to scroll to so this is something i found the other day i hadn't used it before it's really helpful because i was trying to show a client how the in-page navigation would work and he was saying it would be much more helpful if you could just show me how it works not explain it to me and then i figured this out within figma so set the action to scroll to and set the destination to as i was saying before these are why these are all individual auto layout frames because then you can select the destination. So let's set these all up, paragraph one, change it to animate, and we can change it to smart animate. So ease out, 350 milliseconds. And the same before with this offset, I'll show you what this means. So as an example, if we open up our preview, and within our preview, if we scroll down a little bit, and then we click mechanical versus membrane, and we scroll back up, it scrolls us up, but it goes right to the top here of the page, which feels maybe a little bit awkward, but with our white offset, we actually wanna add minus 32. So we're keeping it to the same two. We applied 32 to this, but we need to actually apply minus 32, because if we apply 32 without the minus, it will add 32 pixels to the scroll. So instead of going right to the top here, it will scroll past it, like this example. So instead, if we add minus 32, it'll actually remove 32 pixels and it'll go 32 pixels higher. So to show you an example, 
as we come down now and we click our first anchor link, it scrolls back up and these are actually still in line because they're both 32 from the top. So now let's go through it and apply them all. Now that we've applied prototype noodles to all the links here, as we scroll down, we get an interaction as expected. So if I click on any of these, it will anchor scroll me to the right place of the page. This is a massive win if you're trying to show a developer the intended interaction, or if you're trying to get across to a client what the intended interaction is within a page. And being able to visually show them instead of just explaining it and saying, oh, as I scroll down and I click it, this is what's gonna happen. Being able to just fire up the prototype and say, this is actually what's gonna happen and talk them through it is a massive win. Quick bonus tip if you wanna make it feel even more interactive is that you can actually add hover states to these as well. So if we pulled one of these out, the button labels, click create component, add a hover state. And now if we slightly change the color to show that it's being hovered, click prototype, drag a noodle from your first state to your second state and change it to while hovering change the animation type to smart animate and set it to 250 or whatever you feel like is right. Now that we've dragged it back in, if you select your frame and click present, now you still have all your other feature of it scrolls down with you, but if you hover over it, you get that slight hover interaction as well. One difference is if you wanna to go to this next step, there is one more step to make it work. So instead of the scroll interaction being on the default state, that it won't actually work. So you need to actually, your component, change it to hover. And then with your component selected, you need to add the interaction of the scroll state to the hover variant. All the same as before, the minus 32 and the smart animate. And now switch it back to default. And now if you click present, the scroll still works the same. The hover interaction works. And then if I click the hover interaction, it will scroll me back up to the right place. So now you can go through and, and copy this component as many times as you need it. You just need to go through and change where they all go to because they're currently all going to the first paragraph. So you just come in, change this to paragraph two, paragraph three and so on and now with all your links set up click your frame click present and now you have your scrolling in page navigation that has hover states as well that helps you to know that things are clickable and then as you click it it will smoothly slide you to the right spot of the page thanks so much for watching leave a comment on if there's another interaction or something else in figma you want me to make a video on or watch another video here